there's some things I really want to talk about today. And I was talking to a friend uh, this morning. And she was talking about how she was in Bible study yesterday. And the ladies were talking about how they, they don't need to meet the rest of the month because they're just too busy. <sighs> now, you know, the father heard that. He heard that. He hears when we say we're just too busy to study his word. So this time of year, a lot of people are saying they're too busy to study his word. They're too busy. They're saying they're, they're, this season is all about honoring him, but they're too busy to study his word. To read his word and good morning Rhonda good morning Dana and that has got me really thinking about something I you know I spend a lot of time and, and I encourage you to do the same I spend a lot of time studying the word but I also spend a lot of time processing what I'm reading what I'm studying it's very important to do that and and when I say processing I mean kind of talking it out with the father um, almost like picking all the meat off the bones you know father what do you what are you showing me here what can I learn from this? How can I apply this? Um, it's just a running dialogue all day long. And then it's also a constant evaluation of the state of my heart. I'm constantly evaluating the state of my heart every day, all day long. Because it is so important that we be wholeheartedly after him. Most believers today, and I know that's a blanket statement, but I do feel comfortable making it because I will tell you that I fit into this category most of my life. Most believers today treat the Father as if he's a hobby, as if being a believer is a hobby that they enjoy sometimes. It's a hobby that they enjoy certain times each week. Um, it brings them joy and pleasure when they choose for it to. When I was younger, um, well, I had kids already and everything. Before I started Southern Plate, I was a quilter. And I was a pretty good quilter. I had a lot of, I had a lot of passion for it. I was good at it. I taught classes. I was published in magazines. And I was really passionate about it. But as the kids got older, as I needed a bedroom for Katie, I had to give up my sewing room, I moved on to other things. Because it wasn't my life, I wasn't a wholehearted quilter, I didn't see any need to be, it was something that I enjoyed for a time. And I may go back to that at some point in my life. But now I want y'all to really apply this and think about it. This is exactly how we treat the Father as if he's a hobby that we'll spend time with him if we're around a group of people who like to spend time with him one day a week maybe one night a week bible study maybe we find a good book and we'll get into it for a little bit we treat him as a hobby when we treat him as a hobby we we run the same risk of moving on to another hobby of allowing another hobby to replace him and make no mistake anything that replaces our time with him if we put our Bible study on hold for it, if we put our, if we just kind of postpone our time with him or slowly lessen it and cut it back, that is an idol. That is an idol. Um, when we are not wholeheartedly for him, what does the Father want of us? What does the Father want, Father want of us? I don't know. There's two verses in the Bible, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, where he says, you know, Lukewarm believers make me throw up. It, it sickens him. It sickens the Father. And we've been reading just in today's readings alone. We keep reading, why was Caleb special? Why was Caleb different? Why did the Father appoint Caleb to this position? Why did he entrust him with this? Why did he pour out his spirit onto Caleb in a different way? 
And we read that over and over because Caleb was wholehearted. Wholehearted. So y'all, I'm fixing to do something. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't do this. I've got, I have six pages. It's not that much. There's about maybe five or six verses on each page, but I'm going to read all of them. It's Bible verses, and I really encourage you to face these verses head on with me because these verses are convicting to me, and these are verses that I check every day, and this is why I'm constantly like, okay, am I wholehearted? Am I wholehearted? This is not all the mention of wholehearted in the Bible, but the father repeats it over and over and over. When does a father, when does a parent repeat themselves? When it's important. And so I want us to all face him head on and be convicted of this today. Deuteronomy 6, 5. You shall love the Lord your God. This is the ESV translation. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37. This is Messiah quoting that. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Mark twelve thirty. This is Messiah quoting him. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Luke ten twenty seven. This is Messiah quoting him. And, you, and he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Deuteronomy thirteen three, You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to find out if you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. He's testing to see. He's going he's gonna to try us to see if we will be purified for him. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul so that you may live. That's Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. 1 Samuel twelve twenty. Samuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have committed all this evil, yet, yet you do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Still, wow. 1 Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart for consider what great things he has done for you. Consider what great things he has done for you. Deuteronomy 10, 12, now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy eleven thirteen. it shall come about if you listen obediently to my commandments, which I'm commanding you today, to love the Lord your God with all your and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. Joshua 12, 22, 5. Only be careful to observe the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you to love the Lord your God and walk in all his ways and keep his commandments and hold fast to him and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Whose commandments are they? Are they Moses' commandments? No. <laughs> They're the Father's commandments. We need to face that too. First Chronicles 28, 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will let you find him. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Psalm 86, 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart. To fear your name what's it you know we do have divided hearts we can be half-heartedly for him we can have a portion of our heart for, for him but is that wholehearted no the father does not want our leftovers he does not want our scraps deuteronomy 4 29 but from there you will seek the lord your god and you will find him if you search him if you search for him with all your heart and all your soul Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Psalm 119, 10. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible and it's worth reading at least once a week. <laughs> um, psalm 119, 10, with all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. We see a lot of connection between obedience and wholeheartedness. Remember, obedience is the Father's love language and if we love him with all our heart, we're going to obey him. We're going to understand that his wisdom is a blessing. And turning from his wisdom, spurning his wisdom, denying his wisdom, deciding to go with our wisdom instead, that's a self-inflicted curse. 
Deuteronomy 30.10, if you obey the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. 1 Samuel 7.3, then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, if you return to the Lord with all your heart, remove the foreign gods and the Ashtaroth from among you and direct your hearts to the Lord and serve him alone. He will deliver you from the hands of the Philistines. Psalm 119.58, I sought your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your word. Psalm 138.1, I will give you thanks with all my heart. Deuteronomy 32, and you return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and soul according to all that I command you today. Deuteronomy 26.16, this day the Lord your God commands you to do these statutes and ordinances. You shall therefore be careful to do them with all your heart and all your soul. I have still not come across a verse that says, eh, just kind of be a good person. You know, just just do what's right in your own eyes. Um, 2 Kings 23.3, the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to carry out the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people entered into the covenant. You know, um, before a king of Israel would take the throne, the first thing the king's job to do was, ah, the first job the king had was to write an entire copy himself by hand of the Torah, which is, some people think, oh, he wrote out the commandments. I've seen a lot of people talking about, oh, the king wrote out the his own copy of the commandments. No, he wrote out Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He wrote the whole thing out. We know then, all the people knew, he had read the entire words of the Father up until that point. He had read all the commandments. This is That's where the instruction is from the Father. It's in those first five books of the Bible. Um, that's what messiah was teaching that's what the apostles were teaching that's what everybody lived by i believe it was peter when he says all scripture is um good for teaching and rebuking and you know he's talking about this that's that's all the scripture they had was genesis through deuteronomy and when he had written all that the people knew he had read all that he knew all of it and he was then held accountable for it we are absolutely no different. Whether we've written it out or not, we are held accountable for what's in this book. Whether we read it or not, if we claim to be a believer, these are the standards we are held to. His commandments. The short form is the Ten Commandments. Um, and you know, if we could, that's why I say the short form, but the Ten Commandments, as I've mentioned before, the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the greatest two commandments. But as I mentioned, I have a whole article I've written on it. Did Messiah replace the Ten Commandments with just two? Those, within that framework, all the Ten Commandments fit into it. Because the first four commandments are how tell you how to love the Father. The last six commandments tell you how to love your neighbor. So those two commandments are an outline that the Ten Commandments fit under. The Ten Commandments are an outline that all other commandments fit under. Psalm 119.34, give me understanding that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Psalm 119.69, the arrogant have forged a lie against me. With all my heart, I observe your precepts. First Chronicles 29.9, then the people rejoiced because they had offered so willingly, for they made their offering to the Lord with a whole heart. First Chronicles 12.33, let's see. Of Zebulon, there were 50,000 who went out in the army who could draw up in battle formation with all kinds of weapons of war and helped David with an undivided heart. 1 Kings 14, 8. And tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you, yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart, to do only that which was right in my sight. 1 Kings 15, 4. And people are like, but David, David sinned, David sinned. David was wholeheartedly after the Lord. Yes, he sinned. Yes, he made mistakes. When we wholeheartedly follow the Father, that is when we can benefit from grace. And he will see us as sinless, as righteous, as holy. He knows the difference. He will cover our missteps. 
we have to turn back to him. Um, 2 Kings 23, 25. Before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. Nehemiah 4, 6. Um, let's see. Ooh, I like this one. So we built the wall, and the whole wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. That's talking about, again, their mind is just, I'm going to join the Father. I'm going to be with the Father. Oh, Joel 2, 12. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. I grieve for how I have grieved him. Acts 11, 23. Then we arrived and witnessed the grace of God. He rejoiced and began to encourage them all with a resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. Mm. 1 Kings 2, 4, so that the Lord, I'm almost done, may carry out his promise, which he spoke concerning me, saying, If your sons are careful of the way to walk before me in truth and with all their heart and with all their soul, you shall not like a man on the throne of Israel. 1 Kings 8, 48, if they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who have taken them captive and pray to you toward their land, which you are give, have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and the house which I have built for your name. Isaiah 26, 3, the steadfast of mind you keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. Mm. So here's the thing. Once we get to kings, you'll see this a lot. We're going to see a lot of different kings. And every king is going to be judged by whether or not he was wholehearted for the father. That's how every king is going to be judged. And this steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace. Where's the peace? Where's the peace in the body of believers? We do have it, but if you look at the body as a whole, there's all this infighting, there's, there's gossiping, there's every sin imaginable in the body, and that's just the body. I'm not even talking about those who don't profess to be in covenant with him, because if you're not in covenant with him, you know, these are covenantal standards that we're talking about here. We have a heart problem in the body of believers. We have a heart problem. And that is that our hearts, more often than not, are wholly for ourselves and only partially for him. And do you know what the Father considers this? He considers that adultery against him. Adultery against him. When we put other things before him, he considers that to be adultery against him. We have, there's different things that we encounter in our life. Um, I think we need to understand the difference, and I've talked about this before. We need to understand the difference between preference and choice. The Father allows us to have preferences. Um, you may like sweet tea versus unsweet tea. You may like this Bible translation versus that Bible translation. Preferences are fine. We have a lot of freedom have different preferences. Where do you prefer to work? What do you prefer to do? Different things like that. But choices are conscious decisions we make. Choices are very important. We need to know his word so that we know and so that we can face when we are making a choice to go against his word. When we are making a choice to choose our way over his way. When we are making a choice to choose our wisdom over his wisdom. A lot of times people don't want to read the Bible because they're afraid it might put them to a place where they have to make a choice and they might have to give up some of their comfort. We have to learn to trust him. And I think one of the best ways to do that, in any situation, I talked about this at this conference this week, any situation, any problem that you come into contact with, there's one solution that's always going to make it better. Seek to love him more. Because we really don't love one another enough. We really do not love other believers enough. Instead, we have, we have this bitterness. We have infighting. We have haughtiness. We have a lot of stuff going on in the body. Um, and we need to just focus on loving one another more, which we can do by loving him more. Always seek to love him more. When you do love him more, you're going to be able to trust him more. It does, it is scary. It's one of those things that 
Father, I'm fixing to step out on faith. I'm going to follow you. I see what your word says, and it says to do this. And so I don't see other people doing this, but my eyes are on you. My book is open. My eyes are on you, and I see you saying to do this. And I'm scared because I know that things are going to change in my life as a result of this, but I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to step out, and I'm going to follow you. We don't trust him when we are scared to go deeper for fear of having to step out of our comfort zone. It is a narrow path. And I know that's scary too. But only when you step out in faith, only when you put your trust in him, and you focus your whole heart, you unite your whole heart after him, will you see what's on the other side of that? And I'm here to tell you, it's amazing. Now I'm still working on getting my whole heart lined up, making sure every day I work on making sure my whole heart is lined up after him. Every day I work on increasing my trust. Every day, he waters my faith. He nourishes my soul. It is a process. We are all a work in process, um, in progress. We're all a work in progress. But if we don't work on us, we're not going to make any progress. And it's so important that we be wholeheartedly after him. I do not want to be a hobby Christian anymore. I want to be a wholehearted believer what does that look like? We don't have a lot of examples of that in our time, but we do have examples of that in the Word. So it's something we need to talk to the Father about. I think we need to have a conversation. Every one of us needs to have a conversation with the Father today. Father, what does wholehearted look like? In every situation we come into in the day, throughout our day, when we're making lunch, when we're driving in the car, when we're at work, every interaction we have we need to serve it up as an offering to Him. Our behavior in every situation is an offering to Him. Our behavior in every situation is a representation of Him. Isn't that scary? Not only that, our thoughts in every situation is a representation of our relationship with Him. And that's something we have to work on. She's over here chewing this bone. We have to train ourselves. We have to train ourselves. Um... He knows our hearts. You know, I always say, people say, people use that as an excuse to do whatever they want to do. They'll say, oh, he knows my heart. That should scare us. <laughs> the fact that he knows our hearts, nine times out of ten, should not be a comforting thing. We should never say that dismissively. It should always be said, he knows my heart. Ooh, I better get my heart in line. You know, he knows my heart. I better line my heart up after him and his will because he knows my heart. Make no mistakes. Make no mistake. He knows your heart. He knows my heart. And that's why I wake up every morning and I think, okay, help me, Father. Help me. Help me. Help my heart. Guide my heart. Direct my heart after you. And the more you do this, the easier it does become because the closer you come to him. He knows our heart. Kim says he truly blesses us for our obedience and our heart for him. We are to be living sacrifices. Absolutely. And y'all, that is where the blessings come in. I only thought I'd been blessed before. Now I know. But when we make our choice not to wholeheartedly follow after him, I think we need to be honest with that. So if we say, oh... This time of year is so busy for me. I'm just not going to do Bible study. I'll just take it back up in January. Okay. Enjoy your little hobby of following after the Father. I don't want to be a hobby. I don't want to be a hobby believer. I want to be a wholehearted believer. Another thing I want to encourage you in today, I know this has been, I just, this just, y'all, this was on me. I had to talk about this, y'all. Um, another thing I want to encourage you with today, yes. Ren says, if we love him with our whole heart, we are going to obey him. Absolutely. Um, yes, Kim says, he is our life, not our hobby. Yeah. Um, I want to encourage you with something. Curate your tribe. Curate.
curate your inner circle. The people who are closest to you should be people with the same set of goals and the same heart for the Father. Do not let a destructive force in your inner circle. I'm not saying not to witness to people. I'm not saying not to reach out to people. But I'm saying the people who are not wholeheartedly after the Father, you are unequally yoked. If they are in your inner circle, you are unequally yoked. And I'm talking about your friends here. Curate a tribe of people who are wholeheartedly after the Father. That's important. I'm just going to let that go right there. That's very important. Now, I have been just to talk in your heads off. Let's see where we are. We're at 732, so it's not that bad. Does anybody, is there anything else you want to talk about? Because I may just let you go early if you don't. Um, let you go. Like y'all are here. You know, you are forced to be here or something. That's the teacher in me. Um, I do want to remind you of our road trip. We are going to the Creation Museum and the Ark together. And this is a Front Porch Fellowship road trip. We're meeting up this summer. It's going to be a wonderful time of fellowship. Um, I'm really excited about what all we're going to see and learn there. Honey, sweetie, stop. Come here, honey. Honey's annoying the other dogs. Ricky and I have been several times. Um, I do want to remind you that, come on, honey, this is our authority. Be careful not um, to test everything against this. Test everything against this. Don't think just because you see a believer that thinks they've got it all together that you can take a shortcut by just following them. No. You are responsible for this. This is what you're going to be lined up to. This is, this is what your behavior is going to line up to. You can't say, well, Christy did this, so I'm just going to line up with Christy's. No. This, this is what we're responsible for. I don't care how big the organization, I don't care how famous the pastor, I don't care how wonderful and heartfelt, the, <laughs> honey, honey, stop. I don't care how wonderful and heartfelt the author is. Come here, honey. Um, you will be held accountable for what's in this book. And we have to be very careful not to think, not to get so enamored or so starstruck with um, somebody that we think it's okay to follow them. Not to think that somebody has got it so right that we can just do it their way. There is no shortcut. There, there are no cliff notes. This whole book, whole book is what you need to be reading here. Whole thing. Whole Bible. Um, you cannot read a portion of the Bible and think that you know the whole Bible. You can't, none of it is, honey, stop, None of it is done away with. The Messiah said it's not done away with. The Father said his word is forever. Honey, come here, honey. Come here. Come here, honey. Come here. And when we say it's done away with and when we say that it's not relevant to us, we are contradicting the Father. And we have to face that too. Um, let's see. Twyla says... Um, Uh, we're talking, okay, Twyla, that's a little more, I don't, I don't think that's, hush, that's a good question, but I don't think that's something I'm, that's not something I can answer for you. Um, let's see, um, yes, I'm fixing to love on this dog until it hushes. Come here, honey, honey, come here. Let me get this dog because she's driving me crazy. Just a second. Come here, honey. Come here, honey bunny. Let me get her quiet just a sec. And I'm going to talk to you about topics I ain't talking about. <sighs> okay. Here you go. Y'all do notice that there are some, there are a lot of topics that are relevant and that are very important to believers that I don't discuss in here. Um... And that doesn't mean I don't think they're relevant and important. But the Father has given me one big assignment. And it's my most important assignment. And that's to get as many people as possible in the Word. And so I realize that I, I give up my right to share my opinions on things that 
if I were to share my opinion on things, it is a distraction from, or it would diminish my ability. To, honey, sweetie, stop. It would diminish my ability or my... I'm going to shoot this dog. <laughs> I say that. I'm not really. Come here, honey. Let me just a second, y'all. I'm sorry, honey. Honey, come here. Come here, honey. Honey, come here. You have to go in here. You can't be in here. Come on, stop. Um, okay. It would distract from my purpose. And I would lose my ability. I would lose my window into your life. It's just like certain things like I will not talk politics. Um, and I mentioned that this past week at a conference. And like, so, but what about people who are interested in politics? Well, don't think I'm not. <laughs> if you knew me. The way my husband knows me, you would know that we are, I am very interested and I follow it very closely, but I'm not going to speak about that to you because that's not why the Father has given me a place into your life. My goal is to get you in the Word. Other people have other purposes and this is my purpose, so I hope that makes sense. Um, good morning, Beverly. Let's see. Sally says, just wondering if there's a way to see siblings that may live close by may be able to meet up if they would like to do so. Um, also, do you have a P.O. box where you like to receive mail or do you discourage that? Thank you. Um, Sally, uh, if you know anybody who's local and you'd like to meet up with them, my goal, I'd like to do some little regional road trip meetup type things. I'm limited on time and funds to do that, of course, but if you have somebody local, I don't know how we would do that in a group in like an organized fashion. I don't think that would be possible. I think it'd be an individual thing. I do have a P.O. box. And um, I don't check it that often, usually about once a month, but absolutely any email you get from me, whether it be Southern Plate or Bible Notes, my P.O. box is at the very bottom of that email. Um, and I believe it is uh, P.O. box 1075, Rogersville, Alabama, 35652. Um, it's in my mother's town. She keeps up with that for me because I'm not very good at keeping up with it. But yes, absolutely. If you'd like to do it, that's fine. Thank you, Susan. Oh, Paula, I'm sorry. Her dog's barking at my dog. I don't know why, honey, just, it's like somebody said earlier, she knows she has an audience. Um, so y'all, you know, I, these are things that are heavy on my heart and the father has put them on my heart because he wants me to remain aware of them. It is something we have to strive for every day. We have to have a goal to be wholeheartedly for him. And that is something that I am always working on. Am I wholeheartedly for the Father? Am I wholeheartedly following Him? Human nature is going to have us become hobby believers. I do not want to be a hobby Christian. I do not want to only follow Him when it's convenient for me or if I'm not real tired or if I have extra time or if there's not something good on TV. He is the source of life. He is the source of everything for me. He is the source of wisdom. He is my God. He is my God, and I don't want to replace him with anything else. And so I'm preaching to myself here today, and I think we need to all preach to ourselves about this today. I think we need to all face this head on, and we need to realize that when we're making a choice to be wholeheartedly for ourselves and only partially hearted after him. And that makes him vomit. We don't want to end up in that situation where we call to the Messiah and we say, Lord, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do all these great things in your name? And Messiah turns to us and he says, I never knew you. I love y'all. Tina says, um, being in this Bible study has really made me hunger for more of his word. Thank you. That's, it has me too. When we find the steak, can't go back to milk, y'all. Can't go back to milk. Sink your teeth in. It's, it is nourishing to your soul. We will flourish when we go to him for the meat. 
You can drink milk all your life and eventually you'll become more and more and more malnourished as you grow spiritually. That will not sustain you. It will not sustain you. We have to, we have to go to the wholeness of his word. The wholeness of his word. Y'all be telling your friends because, you know, we're already, we've already gone through the whole Torah, which is also known as the Pentateuch in um, Greek. We've already gone through that. We're moving along through this thing. We'll be starting it again. Yes, Kim says, oh, Kim, that just hurts me. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We serve a mighty king. We serve a mighty king. But we have to be careful not to try to sit on his throne. It is an honor to bow down before it. I love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Friday. This is preparation day. Um, uh, my son is home. I'm making a big supper for us tonight. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. And y'all just, we are blessed. So let's go be a blessing. Remember, we have two gallon, we're a two gallon jug holding four gallons of grace. <laughs>